Hey Stampers, it's Gator again and I'm up to the V which is the Vibrant Vases which goes with the varied vases and the punch as well. It's just extra vases with extra patterns, extra sentiments and different flowers as well. These are absolutely beautiful and they've got the infills. They have the same with the vases and they've got this beautiful little flower here. This is stem or you can use it as a, sh uh, a stalk even or you can use it as a shelf. You've got your leaf and it also cuts those out as well. I got these as my masks in case I was, you know, I just pull it off, stick it on my work and then put it back on my punch in case I'm doing some uh, masking. I'm not using the punch today. Um, but I am using a few techniques. Uh, we've got sponging, we've got embossing, we've got background stamping, we've got um, stamping, inking, colouring and ribbon tying. So <laughs> it's all going on with this one. So I have chosen to do this, which is my vibrant vase. Va uh, vase. I've sponged around the edge. I've used the embossing folders, I've used my background stamp with the logs, uh, the tree rings, I've sponged my labels. These labels I've just found, believe it or not, in the box that I had with um, the Statement of the Heart in, in last June and I just used one of those and these were the large ones that came in the box as well. So I just popped one of those out and they're starting for some reason to look a bit off, that's, that's why I decided to sponge. These are the other labels, just lovely. And yeah, I thought that would be perfect. So I added texture behind with my embossing folder. And on the inside I have just stamped that beautiful bunch of flowers in each of the corners. So it gives us some decoration. You could sit and colour them if you wanted to. I just like them like that. And then I've got lots of space to write my sentiment. I love the gingham ribbon. And I'm going to swap up the colours. This time I'm going to do it all in the base, in smoky slate to match my ribbon. Oh, I love this ribbon. It's just so beautiful. And makes gorgeous bows. So I'm going to show you how I did this one. Yay! So my card piece is my smoky slate. Believe it or not, do you know what I did with this one? I made a boo-boo. I attached it to my card front before wrapping my ribbon round. So I cut it down uh, and then cho chose a white base. So I'm going to show you what I should have done. <laughs> so I'm folding this eight and a quarter by five and seven eighths. If you're in the USA, it's eight and a half by five and a half as your half of A4 and you would score and fold this at four and one quarter. I'm folding mine in half at four and one eighth. And if you was layering then, you would do four by five and a quarter. Mine is three and seven eighths by five and five eighths. Yeah, I attached it and then realized I hadn't put my ribbon around it. So I cut it down, turned this into a card front and popped it inside a white card, but we're not going to do that today. We're going to actually tie our ribbon round first before we attach. This piece of smoky slate is two and a half by four, and we're going to run this through the the basket weave embossing folder. Like I say, my labels were pre-cut. I'm sure if you've got an, a fancy um, edging like we have with the triple punch. <coughs> Sorry about that, I'm just bouncing everything off everywhere. You could add some other fancy in the corner and round up. Or, and if you want to just chop off the end, use a circle punch, maybe a one inch or half inch, and just snip the corners off. And then just do something nice and fancy. But this is two and a quarter. This measures two and a quarter by three and three quarters. And this one is one and a quarter by two and three quarters. Then I've got a piece of vellum just to sit behind the sentiment. Just to give it more texture. And then this will sit upon here after we've run it through our big shot. And done a bit of sponging with our daubers and stuff. So 
So I've got a piece to wrap around my card, which is long enough. And I've also got a piece to make a, a, a bow with. So I'm, if I pop this to one side, I'm not going to attach it too early. <laughs> so with the tree rings, I didn't even take it out of the box. I basically just got myself a piece of scrap, inked up my tree rings inside the case. Because it, am I going to take it out and put it on a block? It's on a flat surface, it's you know, it's not going anywhere, it's not doing anything, it's not. I'm making sure I'm just inking the, the stamp, I'm not going over the edges, so I'm not going to dirty my case. And if I did, it would just wipe clean anyway. So I'm going to close that for a second, and then I'm just going to. Lay that piece on top using my scrap. And I didn't even have to take it out of the box. And just rub in to get that impression on my card. And look at that, it's perfect. Don't need to do anything else but I'll take my little cloth out which I just believe I know, I've just used that with the navy and I've uh, got my navy off as well. And I'm cleaning it up. And now I can close it and put it back away. How marvellous is that? Back on the shelf it goes and I now have my tree rings. So I am just going to grab a little bit of tear and tape. She said when she can find the ends. Just about that much. And I'm going to pop it on either end of this beautiful ribbon. Perfect, and just press hard both sides, and then just oh, starting to fray. Let me just get my little scissors, and then just peel back. Perfect, and the same with the other end. bang and wallop them with them things falling off. There we go. I've got it. And then I want it roughly in the middle of my card. I'm not going to go nuts if I don't get it bang on. I'm going to lift it up. And because I've got glue Double sided tape on there. I can line it up and then just wrap it around. Oh, and I've got it lob cutted, but it will lift back off. I need to straighten it up. Perfect, that's so much better. Look at that. And what I was going to do as well, I just grab a little piece, a bit of this glue, the smallest line in the world. You're not going to see any of that, and it will dry clear. And now we can attach it to. I always like to put a lot around the ribbon because I don't want the ribbon coming off. can attach it to our card. Yay! Making sure I've got the front. 
I'm going to put that little line at the bottom. So I've got a nice border all the way around. And I can adhere it down with my brown folder. And that ribbon isn't going anywhere now. Perfect. Oh, love it. So, my vellum then will go in this bottom corner, hiding that little bit of white. Or taking the attraction away from it. I'm going to add my sentiment there after I've sponged. I'm going to sponge my card and I'm just going to run this. Here is the embossing folder, which is that beautiful basket weave. And I can line this up by the lines on the bottom of here. Because I don't want it off. Or even the lines up the top there. Close the case. And because it's a textured dynamic one, you only need one plate. And I will go and run that through. And make sure I go there and back. got all these little you got the tree ring effect you got the basket weave you know it's just adding texture and extra specialness to your card as well beautiful I love that I did glue the other one down I may bob this one on dimensionals I don't know yet just to give it a bit of height but that's gonna go there the sentiment is gonna be down here I've mounted my stamps and I'm just going to stamp in the same colour to keep all the colour contrast going right through. So I'm just going to uh, put my pin back in there. Make sure that doesn't flag up. I've got my smoky slate darber. And I'm just going to go lightly around the edges. You'd be surprised what you can find in your stash when you're not looking. <laughs> Things jump out at you when you're not least expecting them. I think that's a, you know, and to find something like this, as I was uh, only potting around just doing a few bits. And I thought that would look absolutely gorgeous with this varied vases. So what I'm doing, I'm coming back here because I want to highlight, you know, into the corner to make it absolutely. And then so again, highlighting that beautiful pattern. Paying on more attention to the corners than to the sides. Just wonderful. I mean, these would make great mail cards because I know men like flowers and they love gardening and stuff like that. So this was my aim to the game was, oh, look, I put it away and I need it. Uh, it was mainly mail cards for this one. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment, which is thanks for, thanks for understanding. I'm just going to get that and keep that roughly in the middle. I hope it's dark enough. Almost a little bit pale, don't think. What do you reckon? 
Oh, that's quite nice actually. And going against the, the vellum. Nice subtle hint. Mm, yes, that's fine. I'm going to leave that. That's perfect. I'm going to grab my cloths out. Clean as we go along. Because that's what I do. <laughs> I'm going to need an extra piece of uh, card. And I've got just, uh, just plain pure white card, which is non-stamping up, I'm afraid. But, hey-ho, it's only where I'm going to write my message. So I'm just going to... Oh, look at those beautiful flowers. I'm just going to pop them in the corner. And this will be 3 and 7 eighths by 5 and 5 eighths. Oh, beautiful. And that's going to go on the inside of our card. So there's another one. Nice and clean. I'm going to straighten my vase up this time. It was, a, it was on the wonk last time. I mean, if you've got the time and the patience, you could heat emboss all this in... Uh, I couldn't obviously in the blue, but in, in the grey, you could do this in silver. Oh, just beautiful. And my little vase is... going right there. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm loving the subtleness of the grey. It's just perfect. And now for our beautiful flowers. And they fit perfectly. There's no gap. Whereas on my blue one there was a little gap. If you notice, I didn't quite, quite make it, but it's fine. It's absolutely perfect. away but adding textures and like the vellum and the basket weaving bossing folding you know and a nice backdrop with the the tree rings because flowers and trees are part of nature and uh, brilliant so on my vellum I just used my vellum tape runner I made sure it was nicely lined up at the very bottom of the and you can't see it really but you can't as long as you're using a white pattern or a white background or very pale but if you were to put it on colored card I'm afraid you can see it a little bit so I'm going to grab a couple of dimensionals one in each corner. And that is just going to sit in the center of my vellum. That looks good to me. I love it. So I am going to use my dimensionals just pop in these on the back because this you could have the basket this weave this way or you can have it this way I prefer this way it's whatever takes your fancy want it so we've got a little rim all the way around but not too close I'm not going to 
going to press. I'm just going to make sure that's straight. That looks good to me. Perfect. Look at that. Absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to get my glue this time. Fingers crossed I get it straight the first time. Oh, I had this on dimensionals. Ah. So we're having it the other way around now. So it's all on dimensionals. But this bit's being glued down, whereas this piece, I glued that down and put dimensionals behind there. Make sure that is nice and straight. Gorgeous, I love that. So I'm going to grab my light smoky slate and I'm just going to fill the flowers in. There is a, a stamp in there for this, but I prefer to do it by hand. I'm only doing the petals. I didn't colour the leaves in. Or anything on the uh, the bars. I just made it all about the flowers. Perfect. Oh, this is so sweet. Just so pretty and then I took the I'm just taking the dark I did that with the same I used the light and dark night of navy just perfect if you want to add a splash of color I want to keep this all the same tone on tone so this is why I haven't uh, I'm gonna use my bow maker I've not done that for a while Beautiful bows. Just hoping that tail's going to be long enough. Oh, I should be fine. I'll give it a good pull. Oh, that makes beautiful bows. Just going to give that a little snip. And that snip. Try and keep on the same length. Perfect. I love it. There's my bow. That is just so pretty. There's the best bit. So I'm going to flip this over. I grab some more tear tape because I want to get my tails involved as well. I'm just gonna pull them down. It does grip a little bit of the tail and help keep it in place. Then I can peel it off.
and then what I'm just going to pinch the centers to pull the tape in so it's not sticking anywhere else and then I'm going to add this beautiful little bow right there I'm going to grab my glue just bob a little bit under the tail Keep it into place. I'm going to put some pressure on for a second or two just so it gets a hold. It will dry a bit more solid. Uh, trust me, it, I've done it on the other cards and they've lasted ages. So, I'm just going to grab some rhinestones. Uh, oops, and I'm having one either side there, that's a bit sticky on the end, and I'm just going to randomly pop a couple on here, and I'm going to have one on my card as well, so I've got five in total. But there it is again in the smoky slate. Oh, I haven't glued this down. I'll grab a little bit of fast fuse for this. Beautiful. And this will just finish off that beautiful card. Oh, just absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. So there is my smoky slate. There is my knight of navy. And like I'm saying, oh, a little bit of wink of Stella just on the petals. My nickname isn't Stella for nothing. <laughs> That's what Mandy calls because I used I used to use Winker Stella on everything, so she started calling me Stella. I don't mind, I like it. <laughs> so there we are, that is oh I'm just gonna have to have a bit on the letters there. Just on the thicker parts. Yeah, men like flowers too, especially gardeners. They love potted plants and stuff. So yeah, you could definitely give those to a male. I would. So, what do you think? Do you prefer the blue or do you prefer the grey? Or do you like both? I love it when you both say when you all say both that way. Uh, I don't know. It just makes me happy. So I hope you've enjoyed. I'd love a thumbs up and a share. And I would really, truly appreciate it if you press the subscribe button, followed by the little bell. That way you won't be, you'll be notified of all future videos. And uh, you won't miss out. I do try my best to post every single day. So if you want to be sent a notification, please don't forget that little bell. So handy. And so, um, YouTube will then send you... A message to say that I've uploaded and you'll never miss out again so till next time love you all bye